Dams are some of the most impressive feats of engineering in the world. In the U.S. alone, there are over 90,000 dams generating electricity, controlling floods, and supplying water to nearby communities. Take the four dams along the Klamath River, which stretches across the Oregon-California border. However, there is a significant problem. These dams are not great for the river's fish and water quality. After more than a decade of debates about costs, ecology, and the impact on salmon, officials have decided on a drastic solution, demolishing all four dams. This decision marks a pivotal moment in addressing the environmental issues caused by these structures. The goal is to restore the river's natural flow, improve water quality, and support the return of salmon and other aquatic life to the Klamath River. We are committed to releasing two videos a week. Like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more visionary builds. This move reflects a growing recognition of the need to balance human engineering achievements with environmental sustainability. By removing these dams, officials hope to create a healthier ecosystem and a more sustainable future for the communities that depend on the river. The upcoming removal of the four dams on the Klamath River will be the largest river restoration project ever undertaken. While constructing a dam is a complex feat, dismantling one is an even more challenging endeavor. The Klamath River, known for its stunning scenery and diverse wildlife, flows over 400 kilometers through parts of Oregon and California, draining a basin that covers 31,000 square kilometers. This river was once home to the third largest salmon population on the West Coast, providing a vital resource to local indigenous groups. However, the construction of hydroelectric dams in the early 1900s dramatically changed this dynamic. From 1895 to 1915, advancements in hydroelectric technology spurred the construction of many new dams and power plants, including those on the Klamath River. These dams were initially celebrated for their ability to harness the river's power, producing enough energy to supply 70,000 homes at peak capacity. However, they often operate below capacity due to low water levels and other issues. As with any major infrastructure project, there are trade-offs. While these dams have provided benefits such as flood prevention, tax revenue, and recreational opportunities, they've also had some significant negative impacts. The structures block fish from accessing upstream spawning habitats, causing the salmon population to plummet to less than 10% of its original numbers. This decline has raised concerns among experts that the Klamath salmon are on the brink of extinction affecting not only the local tribal groups, but also the broader ecosystem that relies on salmon. The environmental impact of the dams extends beyond fish populations. During warmer months, the river's shallow reservoirs frequently experience toxic blue-green algae blooms. These blooms occur when nutrient-rich water is trapped, creating an ideal environment for algae growth. The result is harmful for both wildlife and humans, posing a significant environmental and public health challenge. For years, environmentalists and local tribal groups have advocated for a solution. While some homeowners worry about the financial implications of dam removal, including potential tax increases and decreased property values, the overall consensus has shifted towards removal as the most viable option. Even Pacific Corp, the energy supplier, has concluded that removing the dams is more cost-effective than constructing fish ladders and other modifications needed to meet modern environmental standards. Additionally, the company has assured that the electricity generated by the dams can be easily replaced through alternative means. In 2022, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission authorized the $450 million removal of the four major dams, Copco Dams 1 and 2, J.C. Boyle Dam, and Iron Gate Dam. This authorization marks a historic moment as no dam removal project at this scale has ever been attempted. This endeavor will certainly require meticulous planning and execution to ensure it's done correctly and safely. There are two primary methods for removing a dam, instantaneous and stage removal. Instantaneous removal occurs quickly, often within hours or days. This method involves a reservoir drawdown, where water and built-up sediments stored behind the dams are released downstream. This rapid approach can be efficient, but most carefully managed to prevent downstream flooding and other environmental impacts. Staged removal, on the other hand, takes place over a longer period, allowing for a more controlled and gradual process. This method involves incrementally lowering the water level and removing portions of the dam structure in stages. By doing so, the potential for sudden downstream impacts is minimized, allowing ecosystems and communities time to adapt. The choice between instantaneous and staged removal depends on various factors, including the size and condition of the dam, environmental considerations, and community input. 
For the Klamath River dams, the planning process will likely incorporate a combination of both methods to balance efficiency with safety and environmental protection. The removal of the Klamath River dams is not just about dismantling physical structures. It's about restoring a vital ecosystem, reviving a once thriving salmon population, and honoring the cultural and economic importance of the river to local communities. The project will involve extensive environmental monitoring and restoration efforts, ensuring that the river can recover and thrive in the years to come. The engineering challenges are quite immense. Crews will need to carefully manage the release of water and sediment, reconstruct riverbanks, and re-establish natural habitats. They'll also need to address infrastructure concerns, such as modifying bridges and roads affected by the changes in the river's flow. Moreover, the project will require significant collaboration among federal, state, and local agencies, tribal groups, environmental organizations, and the private sector. Effective communication and cooperation will be crucial to navigating the complex logistics and ensuring the project's success. Most dams have an emergency drainage system to quickly lower the water level if needed. This usually involves either a low-level conduit, a channel that can be opened to allow water to flow through, or a stop log a stack of logs or beams that can be raised to let water pass. Once the water is released downstream, the dam itself is demolished with explosives and the rubble is removed from the site. Staged removal, which typically takes months or years, is reserved for taller dams with large amounts of built-up sediment that would pose environmental risks if released too quickly. In this method, rivers are pumped or diverted away from the construction site through tunnels or channels, allowing more control during the reservoir drawdown and sediment release. When the rivers are diverted and the basins dry, the dam is demolished using tools like excavators or explosives. This method is the basis for the Klamath Dam removals, with variations depending on the size and materials of each dam, ultimately returning the river to a free-flowing condition. Starting in 2023, Copco No. 2, the smallest of the four dams, will be the first to undergo demolition using the drill and shoot method, followed later by the other three. Unlike the others, Copco No. 2 has no rail reservoir, so a drawdown won't be needed. However, this will be a necessary step for the remaining dams. In early 2024, crews will open low-level outlets for the rest of the dams to slowly initiate the drawdown of water and sediment at a rate of 1.5 meters a day. Scheduling this during the winter is advantageous because it's the most biologically dormant time of year, so any sediment released into the water is expected to have minimal impact. The amount of sediment expected from the modeling will be equivalent to what the Klamath River transports annually. The drawdowns of the three remaining dams will occur simultaneously to leverage the water power, helping to mobilize and push the sediment through the river. The removal of the Klamath River dams represent an unprecedented effort in river restoration, both in scale and ambition. The process involves diverting the river through new or existing diversion tunnels from the original dam construction. This diversion allows the river channel to dry up, providing a safe environment for the demolition of the dams. However, removing the dams is only part of the equation. Once the water is drawn down, a 2,200-acre footprint behind the dams will remain. This area will need extensive restoration, including the establishment of native vegetation and the enhancement of habitats to support the return of salmon. This restoration effort is crucial for re-establishing the natural ecosystem and ensuring the long-term health of the river. The scale of this dam removal is unprecedented and has not been without controversy. The complexities involved in the demolition and subsequent restoration require a massive and coordinated effort from various managing entities. This project, the largest of its kind in U.S. history, demands meticulous planning, innovative engineering solutions, and significant financial investment. Despite its size, the Klamath River project is part of a larger trend of dam removals occurring across the United States. In 2022 alone, 20 states dismantled 65 dams to reconnect streams and rivers. This trend highlights a growing recognition of the importance of restoring natural waterways and the benefits of removing outdated or harmful infrastructure. It's important to note that not every dam needs to be torn down. Many dams still serve their intended purposes, such as generating hydroelectric power, controlling floods, and supplying water. However, as decades pass and environmental standards evolve, the benefits and impacts of these structures are continually reassessed. In some cases, the ecological and social costs outweigh the benefits, leading to decisions to remove the dams. While it'll take years to fully understand the effects of this dam removal, the project is a significant milestone in the field of river restoration. It sets a precedent for how we approach the removal of aging infrastructure 
and the restoration of natural ecosystems. The lessons learned from the Klamath River Project will inform future efforts to balance human development with ecological sustainability. We are committed to releasing two videos a week. Like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more visionary builds.